Hola to Spain. Yasu to Greece. And thanks for hopping on the jitney to the Bahamas. Those are the three new countries that have joined us in our quest to leave this world a little sillier than we found it. The medley of blame, hate, and technical difficulties is the title of this show as we withdraw from the vault a dumb birthday game from May 4th, 1996. We begin with technical difficulties, or is it operator error? Norm and technology, we have arrived at the end of civilization. Before the game begins, Norm does an entertaining tap dance to fill the time while the issue is being worked on. However, due to the previous editing of the tape, it is not included here. But one can imagine. Jack Hart gets on his soapbox to praise radio, and in the end, all the problems are blamed on one of the players, Shirley. Speaking of players, it's a short list. Shirley from Michigan, Margaret from Falling Waters, West Virginia, Jack Hart, who has had a very busy traffic week, and Tom Howie, who's producing and playing. They digress again before playing the game, with Norm railing on about blame and hate and society crumbling. That troublemaker Shirley is asked for her opinion, and she doesn't hold back. The dregs of daytime TV talk at the time are mentioned as well. The good news is that in the end, after spewing his own hate and blame, Norm's sinuses and lungs are clear. Now it's time for the game with birthdays from Pia Zadora, and Norm sings a medley of her hits. Randy Travis, also known as Randy Bruce Trawick, also known as Randy Ray. Norm gushes on about his love of Randy from his days as a dishwasher to country music stardom, though there are some seedy details revealed, so stay tuned. Opera singer Roberta Peters, Jackie Jackson, Hansi Mubarak, and Margaret has all of his records. Maynard Ferguson, and we just may get another medley. Norm was going to be taking that Saturday night off. The lovely and talented Paul Sullivan was filling in. So here he moves on to May 5th. Annette Benning, and Shirley is up to her old tricks again. Alice Fay and Tammy Wynette, where confusion ensues regarding lyrical content. Other highlights include a moment of sensual delight, perspiration, a Lionel Barrymore cameo, and Norm telling us how he reflects on the show when he gets home. We close with an abbreviated call talking about big bands, band leaders, and black musicians. Episode 85, the medley of blame, hate, and technical difficulties. Begins now. Well, including, of course, the very exciting Jack Hart. Hello, Jack. Is, is it Jack today? I don't, uh, isn't that strange? Isn't that just so darn strange? Uh, are you there, Jack? Is Jack on duty tonight? No? Well, let me talk with this Shirley in uh, Michigan. Shirley, you there? I think we're, wait a minute. We're doing, I'm doing something wrong here. I have, I have a feeling this is my fault, and I'm doing something really terribly wrong. Uh, let me see. Let me see what that could be. I have a feeling I'm pressing wrong buttons or something, but I don't know what. Let's see. Hello? No, that's not it. Uh, let's see. Are you, is, 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 is Shirley there? <laughs> let me see. What, what, am I, what am I doing wrong here? Probably nothing. Probably the entire a different line. I don't quite understand why that is. I'm, I'm really in a state of panic here, Shirley. Things are falling apart all around us, but, and I'm not... That's because of me, I bet. What's that? I bet that's because of me. That's I because... never played before. I'm probably bad luck. And and you have a bad throat, you said. Did you say that, that you had a bad throat, or was that somebody else? I said I'm probably bad luck. No, I heard you say that, but didn't the last time I talked to you... Didn't you say you had a bad cold or something? That yeah. wasn't... Well, was... not a cold, just a hoarseness. A hoarseness. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay, let me bring in... I'll bring in Margaret. Hello. Hello, Margaret. How are you, Norm? I'm just fine, thank you. I don't quite know what's uh, what's exactly what's happening here. We're having uh, some technical problems. Are you really having a time of it, aren't you? Oh, it's having an awful time of it here in New England. Everything seems to be going right down the toilet. <laughs> Uh, anyway, how are you doing, Margaret? Fine. Where, where in West Virginia are you? Falling Waters. 
Falling Waters. That's on a, the river. I guess I guess that's why they call it Falling Waters. All right. Huh? Yeah. Okay, we're we're trying to straighten. Okay, Jack, are you there now, Jack? No, I, why can't I why can't I not get Jack Hart? Hello. Hold on. W w was that your fault that we didn't get you before? Or was that ours? Hello. Yes, Jack. Oh, you... yes, that must be. That must have been your fault, apparently, because I'm all. I'm, I haven't done anything different. Yeah. I wonder why you're coming in now. You didn't come in before. Uh, um, maybe I. Maybe I like to stay out in the rain. That is. You. You expect me to take that as some kind of. A, <laughs> I mean, if you're going to make an excuse, at least make it funny. <laughs> but you could not hear me when I was calling you before. I could hear you, and I was talking a blue streak. I felt like I was on a cellular phone, and no connection was bad. Oh, son of a gun. I think it seems to me when I was listening to uh, Brednoy and uh, and Morgan White earlier, they were having some problems with uh, uh, getting in incoming calls, too. I think maybe we've arrived at the end of civilization. You know, I think that's what we've arrived at the end of. I think so. I think from here on, I think it's nowhere to go but down. I think, uh, <laughs> I, think uh, I, I think all these inventions and everything, and I think now radio is just about ready to blow apart. Oh, no, radio will never blow apart. People need radio. Radio is a vital and useful tool, and it, and it, and it needs to stay more local than, uh, than, than, it, uh, than the trend is getting. But it is a vital, vital, viable tool in our civilization. Oh, shut up. <laughs> What kind of a what kind of a long-winded cockamamie speech is that? I bet I can bring in Tom Howie though. Can I bring you in, Tom Howie? Um, yeah, I bet you yeah. can. Of course, you're you're just sitting across the table from me, so that's fairly easy. And both you, Shirley, and Margaret are there. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I guess mm. we got a we got a full crew here. Ooh, it's very by, strange. By some by some sense, strange kind of thing. Yeah. Ooh. Gremlins. I don't know who that was, but get rid of her. <laughs> like that. Anyway, uh, you've had you've had uh, some bu busy days, or have you not been? Uh, I'm talking to you, Jack, about oh. about the uh, the bridge business and the central artery and the the, the, the guy in Loopy with the truck and the whole business of running in and. Well, cer certainly the night that uh, that the accident uh, that the accident actually occurred, we had quite a busy night. Not only were we trying to gather the information ourselves, but you know, uh, thousands of other organizations are trying to get information and yada yada yada. But since then, it's just dull and mundane. Lane restrictions, <laughs> upper and lower decks. Whoosh. Yeah. Uh, were there a lot when when the, when the when the problems came? Were there a lot of other radio and TV stations across the country calling you to get information on what was happening here? Or, or is that what you're saying? Uh, well, no, not exactly. It's just that <laughs> <laughs> you made that up. <laughs> we did a couple of the local uh, TV stations and such uh, needing to prepare for their morning uh, broadcasts um, did need to uh, call back like uh, every eight, ten seconds and um, find out what was going on. Uh, but um, but beyond that, it was you know the problem was the problem it was one stretch of road. It wasn't like a snowstorm where stuff was going on on each and every inch of every highway. <laughs> just uh, one little corridor. But the only problem is, is that to get from the South Shore to the North Shore, you only have Route 93, and south of the Central Artery, you've got Dorchester Avenue and Morrissey Boulevard. North of it, you've got Rutherford Avenue and uh, uh, McGrath Highway. And that's the only way you can get in and out of the North Shore without going to Montana. What's wrong with going to Montana? Well, nothing. <laughs> okay. No, I was just so glad that I didn't have to drive into work that day. Uh, and because uh, I left early this past night, you know, figuring even at night, maybe uh, things were kind of held up a little bit, too. But they weren't. They were, nah. it, it flowed through rather easily, I thought. You know, people complain about our, uh, our traffic, our highway departments and so forth and so on. But, you know, everything gets done. You know, there, there's only so much you can do and people actually get there. I know there was a columnist in the uh, this past uh, day in the uh, Boston Herald who also has a radio program on some nondescript station who is blasting everybody for everything, <laughs> including including uh, Ted Kennedy. Somehow he brought him in, I guess, for remembering Chapter Quiddick. And I thought, this guy has sunk even lower than I figured he'd ever sink. This guy is absolutely, absolutely crud. He is crud. <laughs> Anyway, his name is Howie Carr, and I don't understand how the Herald lets him get away with the crap that he puts in his column 
almost time after time after time. I can understand the radio station because they have no morals over there. So they'll put anything on. They'll give them a couple of listeners to make a buck. But uh, but this is this is the. It makes me ashamed for this business between him and and Jerry Springer and a few of those programs. You wonder what does our business come to? It's you know, not the business. It's society crumbling. We are returning to the days of cavemen. I think WBZ is the only civilized voice, except for some of the comments of Dave, David Brennan and Bob Rawley. <laughs> I, maybe we're not so civilized either. I don't know. There's, we're, we've come to a point where it's all hate. Yes. Have you known it? Radio hate and television. blame. Hate and hate, blame. Hate, hate, hate. I hate my, my brother-in-law is marrying a woman I hate, and he shouldn't do it. That's why I'm on national television complaining about it. Well, you see then, but then, then you see the brother has to has to get some blame in there. If 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 one brother is hating the guy's wife, well, then the guy who's marrying the woman he has to blame somebody for the reason that he marries that kind of woman. <laughs> well, my mother was an alcoholic, so I gotta blame. So I gotta blame her for marrying the kind of woman that I'm marrying today. You see, it's kind of. But you you think. A vicious cycle. No, but you you think you think that I suppose hatred is easier to come by than than understanding. I I, I don't see. I sound like a Pollyanna when I say that, like goody two shoes. Well, no, you're not a goody two shoes. Hate is easy. It's very easy right. to ju to just say, well, I don't agree with that. I don't understand it. So therefore, the easy thing is to hate it. Right. Yeah. And there's quick to a, judge. Awful, quick awful, 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 awful lot. Awful, 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 awful lot of that. Uh, a lot of people can't speak too clearly either, like me. <laughs> but there's an awful lot of that. What do you think, Shirley? What? Oh, <laughs> shut up, Shirley. I don't need your long-winded explanations about these things. With Margaret, did you did you did you catch what I said? I surely did. What do you think? Oh, I think you're right. You have down in West Virginia where you are. Do you have many talk shows on the air where it's nothing but hate, one call after the other? No, yours is the only one I can get. BZ is the only one you can get? Uh-huh. So you get all your hate from us then, huh? Well, no, That's good. You I might... don't have any hate. Oh, you don't have any hate. No, I wasn't accusing you of having hate. But I'm just saying you, tur tur you have television down there. You turn in the TV talk shows. Oh, surely. And there's a whole bunch of people hating each other. The, the TV talk shows not now are on a different kick. Not a different kick, and another kick. They're doing a lot of uh, makeovers. Mm. He's a he's a fat little guy who's got <laughs> hair all over his belly button, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna make him over so he looks like a good-looking guy in a new suit. <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> I mean, they're they're really reaching for stuff. And and Phil, the worst. Do you mind if I just keep screaming and yelling like this? Now we'll sure. get to the game in Let's just get a minute. Let's get some hate going. Let's up. get Let's some get hate, hate going. That's, that's right. This hatred right. coming for me now that I think of it. The very thing I'm blasting. And let's see if we can find a few people to blame before we're done. Okay, <laughs> Phil Donahue. I think that's a, an excellent program. He he gets subjects that really. Yeah, no, he does. Well, no, he's he's off the air, or going off the air soon. But did he do his last show this week? Yes. Okay. And isn't that pitiful? Mm -hmm. Jerry Springer remains on. Jenny Jones, the Barbie doll of television, she remains on. We've got all these other things. Mark Wahlberg who runs around the little kid there trying to pretend he knows what he's talking about. And, uh, and some of these other pe people with their screechy voices like uh, Ricky Lake and uh, uh, Tempest, is that the other one? One of the others, Tempest. Yeah, but not for long. I don't believe. I think no. I think the whole this whole thing. There are fewer and fewer of these shows. Per, per, but Phil Donahue does an intelligent program, and he's off. And he's gone. Well, because he got sick of it. He, he, he now what's he doing? He's blaming. What's he going to do? He's going to blame the rest of the industry for not having a job. Well, the, the New York station didn't want to carry him anymore. Yeah. He wasn't carried in the in the major city in the United States. Yep. That's because people don't want intelligence. They don't want intelligence. They want blame and hate, foul, aberrant behavior. <laughs> Yellow journalism. You were okay. You know that, Jack? Ugh, I couldn't have said it better if I had a heart full of hate myself. <laughs> okay, I think it's time to play the dumb birthday game now that we've got... I feel better about all this, don't yes. you? Oof. My sinuses have cleared. My, <gasps> my lungs have opened up, and I can breathe easier now. I now agree that I once again. Once I can, that's probably why people hate that. It clears out their sinuses. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, today uh, is the birthday of Pia Zadora, uh. who's been subject of a great deal of hate in her own time, although she's a fine singer. People used to make fun of her, remember, because uh, 
they didn't figure she had a whole lot of talent. Well, she was in a couple of really lousy movies, and then all of a sudden she's she's singing uh, like uh, the, uh, the the classic standards and such with an orchestra. Yeah, and she's doing very well as a singer also. Hmm. Uh, she was in the film Naked Gun, 33 and a third. I'm trying to remember what... Oh, I can't remember the part she played in that. Don't recall. She was married to, or was married. She's not married to him anymore, this uh, millionaire. Oh, the guy who set her up in the whole Yeah, thing? Meshulam Rickless. She was married to him for 16 years. This puts that marriage in the past tense, so I assume she's not married to him anymore. Pia Zadora. She was a guest on this program one night. I remember talking. Is that right? A little teeny weeny little woman? She's a little tiny person. I don't know how I know that since she was on the phone. Oh. <laughs> she wasn't in the studio. <laughs> she's a very small phone. <laughs> but it was, she had a small little voice talking. But when she starts to sing, oh, anyway, Shirley, how old do you think uh, Pia Zadora is today? May 4th. I have no idea. So I'll say 62. 62 for little Pia Zadora. 62 years of age. <laughs> little Pia Zadora is 62. 62 years young. 62 years young, that's right. <laughs> Let's play that uh, that arthritis commercial again. <laughs> uh, Margaret, what do you think? Oh, well, I remember her when she was young, so she must be in her 40s. I'd say 47. 47, okay. Tom, what do you think? Well, uh, I don't know too much about her, but uh, I'll say 51. Anyhow. Fif any anyhow, okay. Anyway. And Jack, who knows a whole lot about her, Pia Zadora. Pia Zadora. Pia Zadora. What was the movie that she was in? Something about, uh, oh, she was some uh, sharecropper's daughter or something. Uh, or I don't know. Some I sort never of a rural setting. Yeah, I never did see any of her movies except for 33 and a half, that naked gun. Hmm. And I don't even remember her in there. Uh, I'll say that she is uh, 34. 34. Okay. Okay. Here's where we go. And I think you're the closest, although she's actually 40. Hmm. But uh, you, Jack, uh, came within six years. Margaret was close. She came within seven years. Margaret said 47. So, but she's actually 40. Nobody really came that close to her actual age. Hmm. And therefore, I'd like to sing a medley of <laughs> Pia Zadora hits so that she might feel just a little bit better. <laughs> Hava Nagila. Oh. Okay, how about Randy Travis, a country and western singer? He was born with the name Randy Bruce Trawick huh. in Marshville, North Carolina. Uh, Carolina. He was once a dishwasher at a nightclub. He first recorded as Aunt Randy Trawick and Randy Ra Ray. He was he recorded as Randy Ray. He couldn't make up his mind who he was before adopting his stage name, which is Randy Travis, which is uh, what most people would know him for. One of his many hits was Forever and Ever, Amen, on the country charts at number one for three weeks in 1987. It's Randy Travis. Mm. I've got every one of his records at home, and I play them <laughs> constantly. I put them on my stereo system. I open the window wide and let it blare to my neighbors. <laughs> I am evicted to being evicted to a poor neighborhood in the next week. Randy, Randy <laughs> Travis. How old do you think Randy Travis is, Jack? Randy Travis. Randy Travis, or perhaps you know him better since you followed his career since the beginning. You may know him better as Randy Trawick. Yes, I remember when he was scrubbing spaghetti stains off of saucers. Yeah, uh, and Randy Ray. Randy Ray. Because he was fooling around with the waitresses, I call the way he got that name. Yeah, yeah, he was just a randy old dishwasher. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Little Richard started out as a dishwasher, too. Yeah, they both loved slapping, slapping women's butts with wet dishcloths. <laughs> it's kind of a perverted thrill that they got out of that, as I recall. Yes. Uh, I read it in Psychology Today. <laughs> Dishwashers who love to slap women's butts with wet dish towels usually become singers. Uh, that's, that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Put that uh, in your column there, uh, Howie. <laughs> I don't mean Tom Howie. Anyway, Jack, what do you think? How old is uh, Randy Travis? <laughs> Randy Travis is uh, 38. 38. Okay. And Tom, what do you think? I think he's 41. 
You think he's 41? What do you think, Margaret? Oh, he's my boy. I oh. think 37. 37? Why is he your boy? You like oh, his stuff? Oh, I like him. Yeah. This is Mrs. Trawick. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Margaret Trawick. <laughs> Yeah, you like him as an individual and a singer, both, you mean? Or both, yes. Both. Do you know him as an individual? Because I, I don't know much about him. Oh, a... no. He married this woman that's about 20 years older than he is. Oh, you like that idea. No, yeah. it made me mad. <laughs> it made you mad? Yes. What if he's happy? What if oh, he's, he's one more boy. happy person in the world? No, I would think that would be nice to, for, for people to know he, he appreciated older women. Yes. Even though you're a younger woman, I, is that why it bothers you? Because you're just a kid. I'm a younger woman. No. <laughs> no, I was. Uh, well, never mind. Never mind. I said any of that. Shirley, what do you think? How old is Andy Travis? He is thirty-eight. Thirty-eight, same as what Jack said. But Margaret hit it right on the button. She obviously isn't Randy Travis. Mm. Right? He's thirty-seven. Oh, yes. The rest of you came very close. Yeah, would you like to have married Randy Travis, Margaret? Well, not at my age. <laughs> <laughs> what age would you have liked to have married him at? <laughs> when I was about his age. <laughs> Around 37? <laughs> right. Are you much older than that? I'm seven years older than you are. You're 77 years old. Hmm. Yes. Would you marry me, Margaret? Yes, I love I'm older a women. Widow. I love older women. I know you do. They turn me on. I mean, really something. You turned on now? Yeah, I'm really. I'm excited. I'm sweaty. Oh, that's fine. If you could see me now, you'd, you'd go crazy. I know I would. Okay. Okay, moving right along now. Now that we've had a moment of sensual delight. Uh, let's go to Roberta Peters, the opera star. And she was born Roberta Peterman. Hmm. That would have been a good name, Roberta Peterman. Yeah. Well, anyway, she made her New York Metropolitan Opera debut when she was 20 years old. I could tell you the year, but that would spoil everything, wouldn't it? Hey, so yeah. the idea is how old is she actually? Is she now on uh, May 4th? And I will ask you that first, Margaret. What do you think? Well, I like Roberta Peters. Uh, I think I, she's a... I do, too. Oh, she's got to be in her 66, I think. 66, says Margaret. Okay, and uh, what do you say, Tom? Boy, um, I really don't know what to say. Uh, I don't know her. I don't know her. Well, the microphone is turned on, so you really have to say something. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. well, uh, I'll conjure up something here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because people are sitting around waiting, I'll say she's waiting 55. to hear. <laughs> You'd say she's 55. Yes. Okay, 55, says Tom. And uh, Shirley, what do you say? Oh, I think she's about 63. 63. I keep thinking of that naked gun line uh, that uh, uh, Nielsen, and what's his name, the, uh, the funny guy in that with the white hair? Leslie Nielsen? Oh, Leslie Nielsen, yeah. You know, like, uh, <laughs> Shirley, you know. Well, I, I don't know, and don't stop calling me Shirley. In that line, see, I was yes. thinking that with Shirley, Shirley from Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Jack? How old do you think Roberta Peters is? Oh, Shirley, you jest. Um, my, name, my name is Margaret. Stop calling me Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see. Roberta Peters. Uh, do, do, do. She's 64. 64. So you're very close, but Margaret... Obviously, a Roberta Peters fan as well as a Randy Travis oh, fan. Oh, I love to hear her mm. hit, 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 you, you hit it right on the button. She's oh. 66. Such eclectic oh. musical tastes. Mm. Yeah, and that's kind of interesting. Like it's Randy Travis, Roberta Peters, and people who play hymnals on the grand organ. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jackie Jackson, who was one of the Jackson family, he and his brothers were known as the Jackson Five from 1968 to 1975, his biggest hit was I'll Be There, which he uh, did in 1970. Or maybe that was the biggest hit of the Jackson Five. They regrouped as the Jacksons for 1984's highly publicized Victory album and tour. And you know something? I find that whole thing totally boring. I don't know what I just said. <laughs> he, was born, he was born actually... 
Sigmund Jackson. Hmm. Became Jackie Jackson. Sigmund, I think it's kind of a nice name, Sig Jackson. He was born, of course, the whole family's from Gary, Indiana. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start with, uh, let's see, who we start with now? Let's start with you, Shirley. What do you think? Jackie Jackson of well, the Jackson Five, later the Jacksons. Oh, I'll say 56. 56. Okay, what would you say, Margaret? Oh, I don't know how old any of those boys are. I guess they're in their 50s. I'll say 51. 51 for Jackie Jackson. What would you say, Tom? 38. 38, and Jack? 46. You came within one year of the actual age. He's 45. Huh. Very good. So we now have a tie between Margaret and Jack. Mm -hmm. Okay, how about uh, Hosni Mubarak? I know that name may not be uh, all that familiar with you. He's the president of Egypt. Yeah. Uh, let me see. I don't, I don't have any additional... Well, pardon me? Yeah, it's going to be Hosni Mubarak, the president of Egypt. He's been, he's been the president for some time now. And... Uh, how old would you say, let's see, Tom, let's start with you. How old do you think he is? Uh, it's got to be about 70. I'll say 70. 70, okay. And uh, what do you say, Shirley? 71. 71. And Jack? Oh, it's do, 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 68. 68. And uh, Margaret? Oh, I don't have any idea. I'll say 70. 70, okay. Because I thought you were a fan of his and had all his, all his records. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's actually 68, which is what Jack said. Huh. Son of a gun. And the rest of you were very close, Steve. Uh, you know, all around that same age. So Jack now has sprung into the lead with three... Correct answers, and wow. uh, Margaret has two, and uh, Tom and the Shirley just that lollygagging, yeah, lollygagging <laughs> behind, and looking. It feels good, though. <laughs> <laughs> lollygagging oh. always felt good for me. I always loved that. <clears throat> I always try to get some of my girlfriends to lollygag with me, but uh, somehow or other they didn't uh, kind of dig it. <laughs> I'd rather go to the movies, is I think what they used to say. And then we'll go to the Waldorf afterwards for some macaroni and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> then, then take me home on the streetcar. <laughs> it's the kind of heavy dates I used to have. <laughs> well, after that, after the macaroni and cheese, we'll get a little heavy. <laughs> okay, Maynard Ferguson, jazz trumpeter and band leader. He started out with the... Uh, one of his early jobs, at least, was with the Stan Kenton Orchestra. His biggest hit with his own orchestra was going to fly now, with, of course, the theme from Rocky. Maynard Ferguson, born in Canada. Uh, he, he, he played notes on the trumpet that weren't even on the trumpet. I mean, they were tremendously high notes. And a great the technician of the uh, trumpet, Maynard Ferguson. Are you all familiar with Maynard Ferguson? Sure, sure, sure. Okay, we'll start with you then, Jack. Oh. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember whether he, uh, last time I heard about Maynard Ferguson, he was much older than I expected or much younger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, let's see. You can, you can strike a happy medium and say he's 12. He's <laughs> <laughs> let's see. I would think that he would be about... Let's say that he's hmm, 61. 61. Okay. And uh, Tom, what do you think? 65. Tom says 65. What do you say, Margaret? I'll try 63. I don't even know him. Oh, you should know him. He's a good musician, Maynard Ferguson. Let me sing a few of his uh, medley of his hits. <laughs> <laughs> including Havana Gila. <laughs> anyway, Shirley, what do you? How old do you think Maynard Ferguson is? Oh, I guess fifty-three. Oh, you sound so down in the 
I'm down in the dumps when you say, you know, five, 53. <laughs> I think I'll chew into that cyanide pill now. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually 68. Mm. 68. And uh, Margaret, no, Tom came the closest. Tom said 65. Yippee. So Tom is there on the scoreboard. How mm. exciting. Oh, that is exciting, isn't it? You guys want to hold on just to, for one second because I have to do that arthritis thing again. Sure, sure. Okay, so you can turn off your microphone and uh, we'll just... Uh, and listen closely to this because someday you may be afflicted in the same way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hold on one moment. <laughs> Nothing is happening. I think this whole board... Is, is this whole thing frozen or something? People don't know what I'm... No, it's not, actually. One moment, please, where the trouble is, seems to be in your set, and we're trying to repair it right now. Um, how about, uh, what we're going to do is go to May 5th, which is um, Sunday, Sunday morning, because we won't be here Sunday, hmm. Saturday night or Sunday morning. I'm taking Saturday night off. Ooh. I'm stepping out with my baby. So nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> anyway, uh, May 5th is the birthday of uh, Annette uh, Benning, among other people, hmm. Annette Benning, who is, of course, now married to uh, Warren Beatty. She appeared in uh, The Grifters and Bugsy. At one time, she was married to George Hamilton. I didn't realize that. And, but she married her film co-star, Warren Beatty. What was, that? what was the name of the movie they were in together? Bugsy? Bugsy, that's right. That's right. I just said that. Bugsy, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Shirley, how old do you think Annette Benning is? It will be on Sunday, May 5th. I think she'll be 37. Shirley says 37. And what do you think, Margaret? Oh, I'll say about 39. <laughs> what do you think, Jack? Should I? Sure. <laughs> uh, you say... <clears throat> uh, you say that on Sunday, May 5th, you know, she'll be 39. Oh, I'm glad I got that off my chest. <laughs> Tom, Tom will be with us a little bit later on. He's trying to put things back in some kind of order here. Uh, so we'll go to you, Jack. How old do you think uh, Annette Benning is? Or will be? Or uh, used to be or might be? Might be. She's going to be. She almost was. She should have been. Um, do, 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 do. She is... Hmm... I know she was 30 at some point, but how many years ago? And do she's... Oh, I love those sounds. <laughs> uh, let's just go with uh, do 40. 40, okay. Yeah. Uh, Annette Benning, actually, she's 37. <sighs> Shirley said 37. So, Shirley, you have broken into the scoring column, you devil. You're that's good. Oh, You know who else? That's a miracle. What's that, please? That's a miracle. No, just, it's, you're very clever. And you, you just took a guess at her age, too. You didn't really know? That, <laughs> is that correct? Thank you. No, no, I'm just asking you. Did you know her age, or did you just guess it? Can you hear me, uh, uh, Shirley? The, are we losing the signal somewhere west of... Uh, Lake Erie or anything? Now, who just said, did somebody just say something about Shirley? Yes, yeah, Shirley, didn't you? Did I just say that you just, you guessed 37, which is her age, and you won? Mm -hmm. Is that you, Shirley? Yes, yes. And then I asked you, <laughs> I asked you if you knew that she was 37, or was that just oh, a guess? Oh, no. I didn't know. I just guessed. Okay. Remind me never to ask you another question again, ever. Oh, Norm. Oh, Norm. Hold on a minute. Let me see if we can do something with this business here now. Suffering Ooh, from good. minor arthritis pain. To the dumb birthday game. Thank you very much, and welcome to all the stations now joining our network. I just have one thing to say. Yes? To use capsaicin or not to use. <laughs> <laughs> that guy sounded like he was auditioning for, for that's true, for some Shakespearean role. He really well, put his whole soul into that. Well, you see, he must have gotten it from that one line. When you, for, for dramatic pain relief. 
<laughs> Hold on a minute. He's, he's, he's going to do that same thing about 73,000 more times before we leave here at 5 this morning. I was looking at pictures of a guy standing there in a smoking jacket. I am an actor. That's right. I'd love to talk about those of you who would like to turn back the clock to hands of the time in order to a time we get to the time. I, I'm sorry, I can't read very well, but I do speak so clearly it almost doesn't matter. <laughs> Anyway, we'd like to turn back the, the time to when you did not have arthritis. <laughs> because we would like to make you body whole once again. George Bailey. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That sounded like... Was that, was that my line? I didn't mean to do Lionel Barrymore. That was fine. Look at your miserable little arthritic <laughs> clerk crawling in here in the hands of Peggy for Gap Sainson. And you asked me to get rid of your arthritis, George Bailey. Will you get out of here? And we're taking away your house and everything you own. And in addition, I'm giving you a bad cold as well. I'm going to kick you in the knees. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, Tom is back with us now that he's made everything good again and put it put the entire system back in, in, in condition. I think there's a call from four other radio stations in Boston that are in bad physical and technical shape. They'd like you to go over and help them out, Tom, but don't you dare do it. Okay, today, it's also the birthday, May 5th, in case you forgot what we were talking about. Uh, uh, Sunday, May 5th, is Alice Faye's birthday. Remember Alice Faye? Alice Faye. Oh. She was born Anne, Anne Leppert. L e p p e r t. I didn't know that. She's Alice right. Faye and Leopard and so on. And Leopard, yeah, I suppose. Uh, I think in, uh, I think in Hung Hungarian, as I remember, because my Hungarian gypsy prince's <laughs> grandmother used to say that. And Leopard and Alice Faye are pra about the same name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, see, if you translate it into Hungarian, uh, and then back into English. You get Alice Faye. You get Alice Faye. That's right. <laughs> anyway, she sang with Rudy Valley's band. That'll give you an idea how far back she goes. Wow. And she appeared in many movies. She came out of retirement in 1962 to make the film State Fair, uh, co-starring Anne Margaret, Pat Boone, and Bobby Darin. Hmm. Uh, she was married to, to Tony Martin. I didn't realize that. To, in 1937 to 1940. Hmm. And then married Phil Harris in 1941, and I believe she's still married to uh, Phil Harris as of this very date. Didn't Phil Harris die not too long ago? <laughs> no. He wouldn't. He wouldn't do that to us, would he? <laughs> no, did he? Not and stay married to Alice Faye. Um, I think so. Uh, within the last year, I yeah. could be wrong, but I thought that I remember uh, some stories uh, about him. Uh, and uh, and his various uh, escapades and such. Okay, I'm looking him up. Let's see, he was born June 24th. Isn't he the one that sang Smoke, 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 Got Cigarette? No, huh? no, he was not. That was, uh, I think that was Tex Ritter. That was John Ritter's father who did oh. that one. He did uh, That's the what preacher. I like about the South. That's something? what I like about the South. That was the, sort of his theme song. And also... Uh, the the bear the uh, preacher and the bear uh, oh lordy if if you won't help me please don't help that bear uh, <laughs> something like something like that and he did a thing called the thing I mean, all a whole bunch of really obscure songs Bill Harris also sang that song smoke 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 that cigarette well he made it, it, a it, record it, of it yeah no it sounds like something he might have done but okay I'll I'll buy that but but the big hit was not by him. I think it was by uh, the other person I mentioned. Uh -huh. uh, and <clears throat> anyway, that doesn't really matter, does it? Alice Faye, the question is, how old will is Alice Faye? How old will she be on Sunday? I'm going to put that to you, Margaret. What do you think? Oh, uh, she must be getting up there. I'll just say 83. 80 must be getting up there. How, how old does she have to be when she's actually there? <laughs> That's <laughs> over 100. Over a hundred. Uh -huh. Well, you're very kind. Uh, Tom, what do you think? Do you, you know Alice Faye? Because her movies all were way, way before your time. No, no. Back, just the before. Rudy Valley is what kind of gave me yes. any idea towards a guess. Yeah, so because you, you know she goes back a little bit if she goes back with Rudy Valley. Right. I'll say, I'll so say 81. I should fall off. 
Yeah. What's that? If she went back any further, she'd fall off. I think something like that. That's right. She'd fall off, yes. Uh, Tom says 81. And uh, Shirley, what do you say? I also say 81. You also say 81. And uh, Jack, what do you say? Hmm, if she was married to Phil Harris, she must be a thousand. <laughs> um... The, uh, it was Archie Bunker's uh, favorite actress, by the way. Once in a while, they'd, uh, they'd um, come up on him, and he would be having a dream about Alice Faye. <laughs> Is that right? Stop touching me, Alice Faye. <laughs> I don't remember that. That's, that's funny. <laughs> um, I'll say she's 79. 79. Actually, she is 81 hmm. years young. <laughs> so that means that Shirley... And Good. Tom, both both have, uh, have been just kind of leaped right into the game as a result. Ah. But maybe a little bit too late. Boy. And I think Jack comes out on top because he's got three correct answers. Are we done? I guess I could give you one more. Do you want one more? Yeah. So we could do yeah. that. Because we do have time for one more. Yeah. Before the fellow comes back emoting about the arthritis <laughs> pain thing. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I think he's... Uh, <laughs> it sounds like the David Brednoy one. <laughs> Cracked fingers and skin that's peeling off. Ouch! You know that one he does. <laughs> Crack cream. <laughs> Zim's crack cream. Yeah, Zim's you know, crack cream. Yeah. We have a lot of a lot of commercials for sickies. I wonder if there's any significance to that here. Yeah. Pain and, and and falling skin and. That's the kind of audience. Those are our demographics. <laughs> there's a whole bunch of people sitting at home right now, just trying to patch themselves together. <laughs> and you can just look at their skin. It's it's not working. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go. Let's see. We'll try the... Uh, Went at them with a loofah that disintegrate. <laughs> okay. Let's do... Uh, let's do Tammy Wynette. Her birthday is May 5th also. She was born Virginia Wynette. Hmm. She could be at least Ginny Wynette. Well, yeah. well uh, she was born Virginia Wynette Pew. Pew. <laughs> P U G H, isn't that? That's Pew. Born on. Well, it a, could be Puff. It could be Puff, I suppose, although I've never known anybody who spelled their name P U G H calling themselves anything but Pew. Pew. <laughs> 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 uh, I know, I know, an obs really an obscene, tasteless joke with a punchline that goes that way. But anyway, she was. Uh, <laughs> anyway, she was born on her grandfather's. Uh, you don't know how close I came to actually saying that. I'd be so ashamed of myself. Once the sun comes up and I'm home at, at home, I think, did I really say that? I mean, I know it was like 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, but just the same. I lose all inhibitions at this time of day. I don't know why that is. Anyway, uh, she was born on her grandfather's farm in Red Bay, Alabama. She said, our property crossed the state line, so I tell people my top half, my top half comes from Mississippi and my bottom half from Alabama, and if they're not happy, uh, turn me around. She said, that's, that's worse than what I would wow. say now. Wow. I don't know what that, uh, <laughs> Stand By Your Man, a song she co-wrote with uh, Billy Sherrill, became an anthem for all the women with hard-to-understand men and uh, Tammy became a sort of unofficial spokesperson for the wronged woman. Hmm. Stand, why would it be stand by your man if she was the wronged woman and she's the spokesperson? For, well, I guess she's saying, you know, if, if your husband is out running around and cheating and drinking and spending the family's money and not coming home at night and, 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 and beating you up and this, that, stick with them. <laughs> you might get to change it. <laughs> <laughs> or either that or you'll end up on the Jerry Springer show. Sure. And then after you've changed him, you'll say, he's not the man I married. <laughs> Ironically, in that same year, she married her idol, country star George Jones, a man whose drinking habits made it ultimately impossible to stand by. I don't mean to laugh. I know it must have been hell for her, but it's, I'm just reading what it says. Uh, she does, obviously... Uh, she doesn't know how to pick husbands. Maybe maybe that may be a problem. Uh, in fact, she told me that right after she confessed that her last name was Pew. Pew. Uh, anyway, how old do you think she is? We're talking Tammy Wynette. Uh, Jack, what do you think? 
Tammy Wynette. Uh, Tammy Wynette. Uh, do, do, do. Actually, one of her other songs was that song, D-I-O-D-I-V-O-R-C-E, Divorce. Oh, yes. So yes. on one hand, she's telling you to stand by your man and then um, dump him. <laughs> yeah. Um... Do, 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 Tammy Wynette. Tammy Wynette. Tammy Wynette. Pew. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's, uh, oh, 52. 52. Okay. What do you think, Tom? Boy, uh, I'll say 50. 50. Okay. Margaret, what do you think? Uh, 54. I like her. Okay, 54, and, uh, well, that's right, because you, you liked uh, Randy Travis, yes, too. Yes, yeah. I like all of them. You like all the country-western folk out yes. there. Okay, Shirley, what do you think? Well, I think 56, that even before Tom said it, I, I just had that in my mind. Yeah, she's actually 54. Wow. She'll mm. be 54. So Margaret hit it right on the button, and that oh, means boy. that Margaret tied Jack... And so Margaret wins this Ooh. swell game. Da, 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 da. Oh, I no. Okay, do we have do we have uh, Mar the information on the? No, no, we oh, do not. So don't. hold on a minute, uh, Margaret, and that uh, Tom Howie will uh, get the information for you soon because you have you have won. Oh. And you'll get a I'm bunch of junky ta tacky prizes as a result of all of that. I'll be glad to get them. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you're you're wonderful. <laughs> okay. And uh, and uh, Shirley, thank you very very much. Oh, thank you, Pre Norm. Congratulations to Margaret. All right, thank you. And Norm, my heart's broke. You won't be on tonight. Yeah, I know it. My heart's broke too. But what? Hey, what can you do? Now We're who, gonna miss you. Okay. Who and, will fill in for you? I don't know what the, what that's all what about. What was it? I don't. It was that masked man. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, Paul uh, Sullivan, the Paul Sullivan of the uh, Lowell Sun, will be sitting in. Uh, we'll be getting out kind of late because we're going to carry another one of those swell uh, baseball games, CBS uh, baseball game of the week, which doesn't start till kind of late. So he won't get on until probably after 1 o'clock. I'll be back Sunday night, though. I have a very big thing to do. I have to bring relations between two warring countries together. <laughs> and uh, I'll probably be able to do it, so I'll be back in time for Sunday night's program because I'm very good at that. You're playing Henry Kissinger. That's right. I may get in, in the middle of the firing line and, and die, in which case I'll, it'll take me another week or two to get back. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Jack. Take care. Thank you. Musical scholar, I'd <laughs> like to know, um, I may be wrong, but um, was it Benny Goodman who first brought the um, black musicians into the big band. He was one, yes. Uh, uh, Artie Shaw also did. And Benny Goodman bought a lot of the arrangements uh, from the Fletcher Henderson Band, which was a black band. <clears throat> and he uh, and he uh, did a lot of those arrangements. His band, which was mostly white, but he has had some black people. Artie Shaw, I think, was one of the first. He had Billie Holiday. Really? And all that. To and uh, Tommy Dorsey had a black trumpet player who was excellent, Charlie Shavers. So there were a few of them. I didn't. I didn't know that. I thought most big band musicians were all white. Most of them were pretty much all white, and one of the reasons for that was when they traveled in the South back in those days, a lot of people would not hire them if it were a mixed band, even if they had even only one or two black musicians in it. It was really frightening. Artie Shaw is maybe one of the most courageous. I don't know whether courageous is the word. I suppose it is. Probably. That there were places he would not play if they would not. Uh, treat his black musicians well and give them accommodations at places other than just uh, where they would allow black musicians to go, those hotels and that kind of thing. There was a lot of lot of uh, turmoil about that in the early days. Uh, so some of the musicians were like that. I, I think Artie Shaw probably mostly, Benny Goodman to some point, and Tommy Dorsey and some of the others. But even, you know, musicians would come along like uh, Count Basie, which were almost all black. Right. So they could only play at certain places. Uh, there was a lot of a lot of that discrimination kind of business, which is why rock and roll came about, because up to that point there had been rhythm and blues, which was a, a, a black bluesy kind of music, and uh, they couldn't play in a lot of white places. Didn't you love the way Norm soldiered on through all the glitches? 
you wouldn't even known there was a problem. <laughs> By the way, the month of May will be a dumb birthday game of Palooza. Every episode will be carefully removed from the vault, examined closely for quality, and put through stringent testing before it airs. Eh, I just reached in blindly like picking Scrabble squares and we get what we get. Closing the vault and riding the radio waves home. For handling broadcast hiccups with aplomb. Heartfelt speeches supporting radio. Lane restrictions. Howie Carr. David Brudnoy. Bob Raleigh. Jerry Springer. Phil Donahue. Mark Wahlberg. Ricky Lake. Tempest Bledsoe. Crud. Pollyanna's. Foul. Abhorrent behavior. Randy Ray. Dishcloths. Older women that make you sweat. Havana Gila. Hymnals on the Grand Organ. Psychology Today. Lollygagging. Macaroni and cheese at the Waldorf. Capsaicin. Zim's Crack Cream. Rudy Valley. Ann Leppert. Virginia Pugh. Tom Howie. Jack Hart. And the man whose quiet reflection on the previous night's program never made him change one darn bit. Norm Nathan. I'm Tony Nesbitt.